I think we saw something against Man City that should be really, really encouraging for Arsenal. That could maybe even be a level up on what we've been doing this season as well. I know 2024 has been described as the best football we played under Mikel Arteta, the best form we've been in. And I think you could certainly argue all that. I, I probably agree. But there have been certain elements of Arsenal's play that maybe hasn't been as good as last season. And we're going to talk about in this video what we saw against Man City that can maybe level Arsenal up even more. Now, to try new things, you've got to move away from what's been working. And I would think that going into the Luton game tonight, that's a big risk. Arsenal have got this run of eight wins and a draw in nine, you know, undefeated in nine, been brilliant in 2024, right in the thick of a title race. We've got a lot of games to come. We want the momentum to carry on. Do we really want to make changes for a Premier League game where, listen, everyone can hurt you in the Premier League. Luton have been good. They've been spirited. They've had a go. They play good football. I've been impressed by them. But it turns out a lot of people do want to make changes. They do want to try new things. This was a comment section um, discussion by Mondamuli and Chris in my last video where, you know, Mondamuli says that he wants to see wholesale changes on Wednesday. And Chris suggests that maybe Rice could be rested for Jorginho. Partey could come in to prove fitness. Saka might need to be on the bench. And you could do something with Kivio, Gabriel and Zinchenko as well. I would be hesitant but when I think about it, actually Arteta might be forced to change a few things, try a few things and look at this game a little bit differently. Not only because the April schedule is an absolute joke, may I say, from Brighton on the weekend. Is that Saturday? I think it is. We've just have played City. We've got Luton, of course, tonight. Next week, we've got Bayern Munich. We know that our fixes are a mess. It's just relentless from an Arsenal perspective. And because of that, Arteta might have to do something. Now, there are certain players I think there's no doubt you've got to have a conversation around. One of them is Gabby Jesus because of his lack of proving fitness. The knee injuries, I get it. I feel sorry for him. It's just what it is. He hasn't been able to prove he can do two, three games in a week. And I also have to keep that in mind. But Kai Saka, because we know he pulled out of international duty with an injury. So, and he came off against City injured. Can he kind of keep playing all these minutes? And Kivio, because he's not a natural left back. So, with Tommy Asu Zinchenko fit... Maybe you do something in that area of the pitch as well. But I think the one to talk about is Jorginho and Partey. And I talked about levelling up. And in that 30, 35 minutes, Thomas Partey reminded us of a lot of the football he was playing last season. But let's start with Jorginho because part of wanting to try this out and go for a different combination midfield is that the fact that Jorginho did struggle against Man City. Now, I acknowledge, very difficult game, very difficult team. And actually, Arsenal said themselves, I think it was Erdogan Arteta, they didn't plan to not have that much of the ball, that to adapt to the game state. And Jorginho and his game, I think, really suffered because of that. If you look here, well, I've got his numbers against City compared to his season average, and he's down on everything. 22 touches to his average of 35 for the, uh, 85, should I say, for the season. He attempted 15 passes, he normally attempts about 78. He completed 10, he normally completes about 69. He was 22% down on his pass accuracy percentage, and he normally gets about eight passes completed in the final third only two against Man City now if that looks bad which it does and I'm not saying he had a bad game by the way he was positionally very good and he got stuck in and he was he showed his experience and he was a leader and he his tactical final was good he did a lot of good stuff in that game Georgia don't get me wrong but Partey betted his numbers in about half the game time because when he came on for Jorginho and played in that six he almost had the exact same amount of touches he was about five short in like I said half the game time he was one short of the attempted passes but completed more as well with a better pass accuracy and even completed three passes in the final third to Jorginho's two as well. So Partey's cameo was impressive, not just from a numbers perspective, but when you look at the pass maps here from StatZone, you can see that Jorginho, to complete a lot of his passes and get on the ball, had to drop deeper, had to come wider. I can understand why, maybe physically he didn't feel he wanted to get right into the centre of the pitch in that battle with, you know, Kovacic, Rodri, De Bruyne, Bernardo. But Thomas Part, on the other hand, did, because as a six, he did drop into that space. He did say, give the ball to me. It allowed Declan Rice to play a little bit wider to get around as he needed to. And in that central area, that sort of deep line playmaking hub of the pitch, Thomas Partey said, play it through me. And I thought it was really good to see that confidence because when he came on against Sheffield United, we didn't really see that. Now, if we take it to a particular moment in the City game, I was really impressed with, it's this bit here. And you 
can see the players on the pitch and you can see that sort of three man midfield of Rice you know drifting left Partey saying to Tomiyasu give me the ball and Erdegaard floating in that 10 space and what's brilliant about this is Partey happy to take the first touch he gets the ball he takes the touch and opens his body forward and then he plays that incisive pass that I don't think we've seen enough of this season from Arsenal that's not to say Declan Rice can't do it he can he's very good at it better than people think when it comes to this incisive pass I'm about to talk about and Jorginho can as well but watch this the ball comes into Thomas Partey touch comes away from Haaland Rodri Bernardo uh, sucked in and Erdegaard receives in the 10 space and Arsenal go the other way and attack we really should have scored from this moment. I think Tross are slightly offside anyway, but still no excuse. I think we should have done better. But let's watch that again because I've got the arrows now here. Tomiyasu plays into Partey. Haaland's about to arrive. But as you can see, Roger and Bernardo, they want to shrink the pitch because they know that Thomas Partey is striding with the ball forward. And Erdegaard knows this doesn't look like a pass that's on, but I know he can complete it because I've played with this guy for years. And we saw that so often last season. Last season's Arsenal are described as playing some of the best football we've ever seen at the Emirates, some of the best football we've seen at Arsenal. We were on a 50-point pace, uh, sorry, we were on a 100-point pace after half the games, 50 points after 19 games, and playing some scintillating, cutting football. Arsenal this season have been more controlled, they have been more calculated with their risks, but I also think a big miss has been Thomas Partey in that ability to receive the ball in tight spaces, turn and open the pitch up, and then play those incisive passes that don't look like they're on. Because when he gets this ball here, and he takes the touch away, Erdogan goes floating into that space, and he knows Partey can execute this. Rodri Bernardo Silva try to close the gap, and Arsenal go on and create their best opportunity of the game, in my opinion. It was the best opening we'd created all game, and yet it could be because of a tired Man City, but I think Thomas Partey can create that moment for Arsenal time and time again like he did last season. The question is, can he prove his fitness and be available enough to get into that rhythm and Arsenal to get back into that rhythm with Thomas Partey? Because I've always felt that Rice, Erdegaard, Partey is Arsenal's best midfield three, but we've seen it, I think, twice this season, and both times came against Man City. <laughs> And it was when Partey was off the bench. <laughs> Actually, the third time came against Man City in the Community Shield. We haven't seen anywhere near enough of it. So it begs the question then, if we want to get Thomas Partey in this rhythm, do we have to get him in the team sooner rather than later? I'm not so sure. And let me show you. I'm going to give you my 11 to face Luton. I've got it right here. And we're going to make the players a bit bigger because you're not going to be able to see that. There we go. Now, for me, I still go with Jorginho. I think Partey needs another 35, 35 minutes off the bench. And I think we need to get him in for Brighton. I think that's the game we need him more for if he's to play to this level that it looks like he might be ready to come in at. So I'd go for Jorginho again. I would get Zinchenko in the team, as you can see there. And I would play Jesus, even though I do have my worries about him being able to play two, three games in a week. I think ultimately Saka needs the rest. Jesus is the best replacement out on the right. And I think you could probably go into that Brighton game with Jesus on the bench if Saka is fit to play. So that's my 11 with, of course, Martinelli starting. But I think Arteta will do something different. I actually think he's going to bring Jorginho Zinchenko out from my 11. I think he'll play Trossard in the, well, false nine because he's not going to play as a six, is he? And he'll play Rice as the six with Havertz in midfield. Havertz did really well, actually, in the left eight against Luton. I've not really been happy with Havertz as a midfielder, but I do think that is something we might see against Luton. He's done really well as this kind of shadow striker when he has played at times in, in midfield, sort of running beyond the forward so the forward can drop in and you know form that sort of overload in midfield. And I think he's going to do it again because I don't think he'll ultimately want to start Partey quite yet. And I also don't think... He'll, I think, I think he'll want to give Jorginho the rest, and he'll be happy to play Rice at the six, where he's played a lot of football this season. And I think he'll just go with something. But I was basically a midfield combination that worked against Luton last time. When I say worked, it took a 97th minute winner <laughs> to get the three points. We scored three goals, four goals. We created chances, and a lot of the goals we conceded were errors and bad moments from David Raya and set pieces. So I actually think he'll be confident this kind of system and approach to the game will work. I think he'll stick with Kivior as well because Kivior's done well and I think he'll want to reward him, keep him in the team and not upset the balance of the back four. That's the 11 I think he'll go with. I've given you the 11 I would go with. But ultimately, the key question is, is this an opportunity to get some key minutes into legs? And even if it's not, because you don't want to disrespect Luton, I'm on that. I don't want to disrespect any team. I'd go with our best 11 if possible. But what is our best 11? Not just for this 90, but for what is to come between now and the end of the season. There's a lot of football to be played. 
then we've got to manage minutes very very crucially and i just want to say a really big thank you for watching this video if you did enjoy it actually hit the links right here to watch more content like this including my football first podcast which drops every monday to friday at 6 a.m and i know it's annoying i am really sorry to have to ask but if you want to show support to the channel hitting the like and subscribe buttons help promote the content much more than you could possibly know thanks again